Mm. Okay, I use the rites and rituals and parallel this against the Easter rite. And when I did perform the Easter rite in the context of a Kele tradition, the people were like, wow. Where did all of that mystery come from? Mm -hmm. You know, where did all of that biblical reality come from? Right away, it because it was in their language, it was in their culture, it mimicked a wake within a local context. Mm. The stories were narrated in Creole. It was dramatized by the old people. The, everything was done with drum beating, etc. And the people were like, nobody slept in church that night. Mm -hmm. You know? And they looked forward to it every year. Of course, it had to be done with the competent authorities guiding me through that study, having the approval of the local bishop and the approval of the wider church. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about approval of the, the wider church, um, we're talking about exorcisms and demon possessions. The church has been very clear about the right of exorcism. Mm -hmm. um, and I know from reading experience watching television that the church often requires that a physician has to be present to determine um, whether this is an actual exorcism. And I'm speaking again about the doubting Thomases, people who don't believe in these things, um, who will dismiss it as you know um, a psychological um, issue rather than a spiritual issue. There is a very, very, very thin line between mm -hmm. psychotic people mm -hmm. and possessed people, mm -hmm. demon possessed people. Any exorcist who's working from a sane perspective do not start praying over someone who says I'm demonically possessed. He's not a competent authority in matters of health mm. to be able to make that judgment call. Advisably, the individual must first have the patient or the person who have come to them, the victim of such heinous experiences, see a doctor mm. to diagnose exactly what is happening. If the doctor says this is um, something psychological, you give the person the time to see the psychologist. Mm -hmm. You do not jump in and start praying. The person's condition may, necess may necessitate medical or psycho psychological help. Praying does work, mm -hmm. but there are latitudes that we must not take in doing so. Because in just praying and praying and praying, and nothing is happening because the person's health necessitate due care and attention by either of the following two persons, mm -hmm. we can damage your faith. Because you, God doesn't like me, because God isn't doing anything for me. Because I can't do anything because your need is not spiritual, mm. it is medical or psychological. So anybody who comes to me, desperate as they may be, I say, there is a channel that we must go through mm -hmm. to be able to reach the end of our objectives. And this channel you must take, I'm sorry. Okay. And you spoke about the fact that you've had your own experiences as an exorcist. Um, reading the, the, the story of Father Laporte, I know that at some points he wrestled with his faith. Did you at any point, because of your experiences with these um, demonic forces, question your faith, your decision to become a priest? No, I have never actually questioned myself at any given time mm. as to why I have become a priest. Mm -hmm. Necessarily going into something like this or embracing exorcism or having to perform that is indeed a very challenging situation. 
The first thing is it brings home the gravity of your own inadequate self mm -hmm. and um, it challenges your own spirituality. It makes you more conscious of your unworthiness and you know that you are not the powerhouse behind anything. And if you would dare do that, it's a fiasco waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. You must always have God at the forefront. You may have noticed in instances, my first reaction was to charge away, to run off. Because I didn't know what I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. I was like a total neophyte. And I didn't want to handle this. And every situation that came up intimidated me. Mm -hmm. But there is one psalm that always gives me that courage. It's Psalm 8, verse 5. I have created you in my own image and likeness. I have given you power, authority, and dominion over all the works of my hands. Mm -hmm. And once you're able to internalize that, you recognize you are not your own master and you are only an instrument in the hands of God, but God has empowered you to do certain things. How old were you when you had your first experience? 30. You want to tell us about that story? I think it's the first story in the book about a little kid being brought to me. Mm -hmm. I was a little baby. A little baby. Yeah. That reacted to the name Jesus. My memory serves me correctly? No. No. Not that one. This kid was seeing somebody, and um, it was a deceased person that mm -hmm. was affecting her life. Okay. With you for a break, let's take that break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation. We're talking with uh, Father G. Lambert St. Rose, author of In Turbulent Waters. Uh, very interesting book. Um, when we come back, we'll talk some more about demon possession, exorcism, and related topics. This is Newsmaker Live. I'm Kendall Burton. We'll be right back. <laughs>